In this lesson, we shall focus on trigonometric equations. To start with, we shall actually discuss how to solve question 5.3. Now, this question appeared in um, a November 2022 exam paper. Right, so determine the general solution of the following equation. We've been given cosine x plus 2 sine x. 3 sine 2x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, now to solve this one here, we actually have um, cosine x. Okay, so in other words, we have a product of two expressions equals zero, which means that cosine x plus two sine x equals zero. Right, if that is the case, or we have the, the three trigonometric sine of two x minus one equals zero. Okay, obviously, if we have the product of two expressions equal to zero, in particular, product of two binomials, it's a binomial, one, two, one, two terms. So it's a product of two binomials and the product is zero. It means that each of these is zero or, or they are both zero. Okay, now um, we're able to see um, at this point that we can be able to transpose the terms. How do we transpose the terms? So you can write two sine x equals minus cosine x. Or we can be able to write the trigonometric sine of 2x equals one third, like so. We perform um, a simplification of this here. If you divide by the cosine, we get the trigonometric sine of x divided by cosine x, which equals minus one half, or the sine of twice x equals one third. Okay, we divide it by the cosine and uh, we also divide it by the two. And this gives us um, the results. Okay, right. Now, the sine of x over the cosine of x gives us the tangent of x. And this is actually equal to minus one half or the sine of two x equals exactly one third like so and then now at this point we will proceed to get what you call the reference angle right so to get the reference angle because we actually have the, these particular trigonometric equations and uh, we need to always get reference angles the reference angles that you can obtain from here is obtained by actually getting what you call the arc tangent arc tangent of the positive always the positive, or um, we come here and we find the reference angle of this uh, equation here on the far right. And this is uh, what we call the arc sine of one third. Arc sine of one third and arc tangent of one third can also be written as follows. Now, in other words, uh, it is always possible to write arc tangent of one half or the reference angle equals also the arc sine of one third. Okay, so this is exactly what we do. Now, at this point, we obviously this one is one half. To make sure it's very visible, it's one out of two. Now, we use our calculators to actually be in a position to get the result at this point. And if we do, it is obvious. It's very clear that this is uh, uh, means that the reference angle, the arc tangent of one over two is actually 26 comma 565 degrees. Or at this point, we also able to see the arc sine of one third. And this is 19 comma 471 degrees. Okay, we have got uh, two equations. We have been able to see that we have the reference angle here, which equals the 26. Okay, now I want to first write uh, a step that is uh, very, very important for us, okay. Uh, we need to recall that we had the tangent of x equals minus one half. First things first. So where the tangent of x equals 
minus one half. Moreover, it actually came down to the reference angle, which became 26 comma 565 degrees. Or we also able to uh, get here the sign of 2x equals one third. Or we have the reference angle, which is 19 comma 471 degrees. Okay. Okay. Now, there are a couple of things we need to recall here in view of uh, our old friend, what you call the cast diagram. Right, the cast diagram is very clear, but also it is one diagram that must be uh, appreciated so much. So where, in other words, if you look at the cast, right, with the cast, we're able to know that the tangent is native in which quadrants it is native. Uh, for instance, in the second quadrant, but also in the fourth quadrant, it is positive in the first and the third quadrants. Okay. At this point, we are interested, therefore, in the, in the quadrant in which the tangent is negative. And therefore, it means that X is equal to 180 degrees minus 26, 565 degrees plus. Now, the tangent itself has a period of 180 degrees. So we have K times 180 degrees, but also K itself is an element of the set of integers, right? So this takes us to the second quadrant because we have 180 degrees here. And if we say 180 degrees minus 26,565, we're able to get the angle uh, that is required in the second quadrant. Meaning um, if we do the subtraction here, we get 153 comma, four, three degrees, plus, right, plus exactly, K times 180 degrees, where K is an element of the set of integers, like so. Okay, but obviously this is not the only case. We also have one uh, case we can actually consider here at this point, for example, because it's also um, negative in the, the tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant, meaning we'll have um, 360 degrees minus 26, 565 degrees plus K times um, 100. Well, um, K times 100 and uh, um, right, and 80 degrees, you can have that part there. We can have that part there. All right. So in other words, you can also have that. In particular, if you do this, let me just check uh, what this gives us. For, for example, if you say 360 minus 26.65, okay. Um, right. I'm trying to check. What, what are we getting here, 565? Five, five? Right, so we're getting um, triple 3.43, yeah. So we're getting here, for instance, x, uh, 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 x equals, right, the 360 minus that would give us exactly um, 3, 3, 3, comma, 4, 3 degrees plus, K times 180 degrees uh, plus, um, yeah. K times 180 degrees and K is an element of integers. Okay, good. Now we continue to look at the other part as well. So we've exhausted the two quadrants, the, the two quadrants of interest, namely the second and the fourth. Okay, now looking at the other quadrant, uh, the other equation. Right, and obviously focusing on the quadrants where the solutions lie. At this point, the sign, we know it's positive here because it's the sign to x is positive one third, and we found the reference angle is positive in those in the first and the second quadrants, and which therefore means that our x here is actually exactly 19. Our x is actually 19, comma, 471 degrees plus. Okay, now we have this, which is 360 degrees 
times k, where k is an element of the z of integers. Okay, remember, it's 2x. Mm -hmm. It's 2x. It's 2x. Right, it's 2x. So in other words, uh, obviously now 2x equals this here, but then you divide right through by two. Now 19 divided by two is nine comma seven four degrees. If you divide 360 by two, we get 180 degrees where k is an element of the set of integers. Okay, so we have found a solution, yeah, a set of solutions in the in the first quadrant. Um, of the of the plane, but now we continue to find solutions also in the in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, we're going to use the one hundred and eighty degrees minus one hundred eighty degrees minus the reference angle, which is nineteen comma four seven one degrees plus three hundred and sixty degrees times k, where k is an element of z. Right, let's find the difference. Um, if you say 180 degrees minus that one, so right, we can quickly do that. So 180 degrees minus uh 19.471. 180 degrees minus 19.471, we're getting 160. Right, so it's, it's, it's 160 with the with the comma, so it's 160 decimal comma. Right, 160 comma 529. Right, and so, to round off to two decimal places. Thank you so much. We can always round off to two decimal places, but obviously, um, preferable for the end, um, for the end. But yeah, we can always round off to two. So yeah, we can write can write five three. It's five two nine, but yeah. Five three, um, but obviously it's always uh, advisable to round off in the end um, to avoid discrepancies. But obviously at this point, uh, very negligible discrepancies can always arise. So, in any event, uh, you can always round off um, there. Okay, dividing by two will give us eighty. Eighty does my comma two six four five, but yeah, that'll give us like two six degrees. If dividing uh, 360 by 2 is 180 degrees times k, where k is an element of the set of integers. So that gives us um, the um, um, the solution here. So, right, so we have got these answers there. Okay, so we're good. We're so good there. All right. And therefore, what are the solutions to this particular? And obviously, I mean, I've answered the question in terms of the general solution. We found uh, this set of solutions here, solutions here, solutions there, and solutions there. And therefore, we have been able to solve for this particular question uh, 5.3 uh, in a step by step manner. And uh, we are we, we are done with this question. Um, let's look at the next question. Right, let's get the next one. In the next case, we need to actually uh, consider the fact that we've been given the identity this, this identity. We need to prove this identity. Okay, and obviously, I mean, it's pretty straightforward to prove this. Let us proceed to prove this. So we're looking at 5.4.1. And how do we therefore do this one? So to prove this one, we need to let. We need to let the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, we can... Uh, Prove it either way. Either we take the left to produce the right or the right to produce the left. Okay, it's an identity, and then we shall, uh, I decided to just include this one here. So we have the cosine of x plus y, the cosine of x minus y, which is cosine x, cosine y, minus sine x, sine y. And this is cosine x, cosine y, plus sine x, sine y. Okay, using some of these trigonometric um, compound, compound angle formulae, we're able to have the following expansions of the trigonometric uh, compound angles. Okay, compound angle um, um, identities. Okay, so we have the x plus y, which becomes this. With the cosine of x plus y becomes this, and the cosine of x minus y becomes that. And then what is next? We multiply here. 
we open up the brackets in the contemporary language of many students. So if we multiply these with that, okay, now this, uh, what is this? What kind of an, a marble is this? This is like a difference of two squares, right? So if you look in what to call difference of two squares, what is the difference of two squares? If you have a squared minus b squared, it is a minus b and then a plus b. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same thing because it's just cosine x, cosine y, cosine x, cosine y, sine x and y, sine x and y. They just differ by these two expres expressions, differ by the sign in the middle. Okay. So at this point, uh, we can just multiply these with that, which means it's going to give us cosine squared x. Cosine squared y. So just multiply this with that and this with that only. Uh, difference of two squares. So which is sine squared x sine squared y. Okay. That is what we uh, are able to achieve. And what is the left-hand side? The cosine is 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, you can change the the cosine squared and write it as one minus sine squared. Simultaneously, keep this and return the cosine squared uh, y there. Okay, and then we can also change this one. We can also make the following changes because at this point we can see that there's no cosine x here. There's no cosine y. There is sine x, there is sine y on the right. So meaning that we need to convert every cosine x and every cosine y, which is one minus sine squared y. Wait, I don't understand how you got the uh -huh. last part. This one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. That's fine. Now, uh, obviously, we remember our um, grade 11. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is always 1. And this is true for all x in the real numbers. So um, at this point, uh, if this is the case, uh, we can be able to realize that cosine squared. Let's make cosine squared the subject here. So that cosine squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, so yeah, that is what we have. And therefore, um, it means therefore, wherever you have the the cosine squared, we actually are able to get um, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. But also, uh, yeah, cosine squared y is 1 minus sine squared y in, this, in, in a similar fashion. So now this one here is therefore uh, the same as the sine squared y. Okay. Sine squared of y. Okay, by distribution, Opening up the brackets here or op opening up the parentheses, we have one times one, which is one, one times minus sine squared, which is minus sine squared y, minus sine squared times one, which is minus sine squared y. And then if we apply this, okay, this one we multiply everything because it's not a difference of two squares. It's not just plus or minus with the same um, expressions within the parentheses. So we're going to multiply the sine squared and the sine squared here, and they, get, they give us plus the sine squared x the sine squared y minus sine squared x, sine squared y. Okay. These two guys cancel out, meaning the left-hand side is one minus sine squared y. Okay. This by this, this by that. Let's see. This by this, this by that, and this. So this is sine squared x. This one is sine squared x. Just take note of that. So obviously after the cancellation, we have uh, one minus sine squared y and then uh, minus sine squared um, x. Sine squared x. Like so. And this guy here, it's our old friend. It is exactly what we had. We had this guy here um, long, long ago. And it is actually the right-hand side that we have been having for way too long. Right, so obviously, I mean, the examiner just put the sine squared, the x first and the y second, and we're able to do that. 
and say, therefore, the left-hand side equals 1 minus. So you can just put the the X first, because in terms of the al the, 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 the English alphabet, so we have X and Y, and this is the right-hand side. And this is the answer. This is the answer. So we've been able to prove this identity, and then we can even write the conclusion and say, hence... Hence, we're able to see that if we have the cosine of x plus y times the cosine of x minus y, it is 1 minus the sine squared of x minus the sine squared of y, like so. And, and therefore, we have been able to prove the identity, as the examiner asked. We proceed to the next question. In the next question, the examiner is asking something similar. And the examiner is saying at this point, hence do something. Hence determine the value of this expression without the use of a calculator or without using a calculator. So let's find the value of this particular expression without using a calculator. First and foremost, we need to realize that um, to get the answer here without using a calculator, would realize that uh, one minus the sine squared of 45 degrees minus the sine squared of 15 degrees, which is this, is the cosine. Okay, so at this point, if this is like an x and a y, so this is like an x and that is like a y. So obviously on the other side of this, it's going to become the sum of the x and y. So it's going to be 45 degrees plus 15 degrees. So we're adding up the x and the y. And we multiply by the cosine of the difference of this. So it's 45 minus 15. 45 minus 15 degrees, like so. Okay. Now at this point, we're able to find the summation. So what is 45 plus 15? It's exactly 60 degrees. Right? And we have 45 minus 15. 45 degrees minus 15 degrees yields 30 degrees. as written. Okay. Now we have our old special triangle and we bring it on board. And we have this guy here and this is 60 degrees always. This is 30 degrees all the time. And this is two, the square root of three to one. Okay. Okay, Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Right, meaning now we have the cosine of 60 degrees, which is adjacent of hypotenuse, which is actually one half. And therefore, we have the um, the cosine of 30 degrees, which is adjacent of hypotenuse, which is actually the square root of 3 out of 2. Like so, and we get the answer to this. And the answer is what? We have the liberty to even write it anywhere. In particular, we can be able to see that this is the square root of 3 out of 2 by 2 is a 4. And that's the answer. And that is the answer. Two by uh, and two by two in the denominator is a four. So we've been able to determine this without using a calculator, and that is something that uh, remains pivotally important, but extremely, extremely important. And we look at the next, the next question. Right in the next case, uh, we have uh, this equation that looks very terrifying, I believe. It has cubic, so you're dealing with cubic trigonometric functions here, okay, it's cubic degree uh, of the third degree, this one, and particularly it's the fourth degree that, you know, uh, because it's the third degree by another variable here, so it's fourth degree. Consider the, the trigonometric expression, this one here, rewrite the expression as a single trigonometric ratio. Okay, the examiner is saying rewrite this one as a single trig ratio. Maybe I can to give you a chance. You try some of these and you tell me, you say, tell me what the first step is going to be here in 5.1.1. If we have 16, the sign, because you're the only one here on the line. I'm not having other students to intimidate you. The best way to teach a player is to let them play, is to put them on the field of play and say, kick the ball. And that is what is going to make them able. But if we just say to the player, we're going to play for you the whole time. And now, then you're able to play. It's a fallacy. It's not the truth. Okay. What would you do first here now? What do you think? I need to, I need to engage you a little bit. You'll forgive me for that. 
What do you think we need to do here? Are you able to see the question? Okay, because the, yes, four yeah. times four sine okay. x. Okay, would say four times four sine x, right? Like four times four sine x, like so. Okay. And then I'm just giving you a chance. Remember, okay, remember that this is saying rewrite the expression as a single trigonometric ratio. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm just giving you a chance. Okay. I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to give you the next one. Maybe that is fair. Okay. But we are, we have not seen the, we have not seen the, um, the next one. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. Okay. You want to say something? Okay. Can, okay, okay yes, wait, that's fine. Okay. First things first, because we need to simplify this. It is an expression. We, we go to our old friend, the HCF, the highest common factor. Which What is the highest common factor of 16 and 8? The biggest one. It's 8. 8. So we can take out 8. So we're done. Okay. 8 has been taken out. But now we need add another common factor. Sine x, sine x, anything else? We can see that the sine x is also sine x, right? So we can take out sine x. Okay. We want to take out the highest common factor. So we're looking at each of these. Expressions. There's cosine x is cosine cubed, so we can take out cosine x, like so. In a point careful examination, if you then you then do division inside the expression, so you do you say sixteen divided by eight. What is sixteen divided by eight? Okay, that one gives us a two. Because the sign has been taken out, you can do this. Okay, this sign has been taken out, so you close this out. The cosine has been taken out, so you cross out. Okay, we take out one cosine, we're left with two. Okay, so or in other words, two cos squared. Cosine squared. Squared. Well done. Cosine squared x then minus one. Okay. What is next? This was a bit tricky to my students. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Okay. I'm just saying, yeah. What do you think now? Cos 2x. Cosine 2x. Yeah, it's cosine 2x because we know that cosine 2x is actually 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So, which means that we have 8 sine x cosine x. Okay. And this is cosine what? 2x. Okay. Which is or open bracket, we can take out a two here, giving us two sine x, cosine x. We can just extract and factor out eight to four times two, and it gives us these. What is two sine x, cosine x? What is this equal to? It is actually, um, it is actually this guy alone. Um, we know that the sine of two x, is Isn't that cause cause two x? Yes. Okay. You know, <laughs> there's a two. Yes, there's a two. There's a two that's missing, right? I'm happy that your eyes are wide open. It's cause into x, so we carry it forward. I agree. Okay. So uh well done there. Okay, and thank you for noting that. Okay, now if you're looking at the fact that we factored out eight, and eight can be factorized into four times two. And uh, now what is the yeah, I was writing here that sine to x is two sine x cosine x. Okay, yar, so we have that. So what is the next thing that you have here? Okay, yeah, this one is sine to x and then this one is cosine to x. Then what do we do next um, here now? Anything else? Because, okay, the objective is to write it as a single trig ratio. I'm just giving you a chance. The objective is just to write it as a single trigonometric ratio. I'm just giving you a chance. Yeah, what do you think? Any thought? Any idea? What is the next step? Or what would the yeah, that's a good question. What is the next step? Your thought? I'm giving you a chance to engage because you're the only one here talking to me. You know? So I'm trying to engage you so that you can learn and become a good citizen of South Africa. Right, so obviously, I mean, we are a citizen of a country and we can become a citizen of the world, of the globe. Okay, but yeah, we can take out another two. 
and write two sine two x cosine two x. I'm gonna engage you. Forgive me. Okay, just engaging a little bit. Okay, what is two sine x cosine two x? What is the answer here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cos four x. Cosine four I mean, x. I mean, it is yeah. sine four x. Well done. No. So, yeah, sorry, sine four x. <laughs> okay, yeah, but you're on point. You're on point. Okay, now you can be able to uh, write this like that because sine two x is two sine x cosine x, which means it is two the sine of four x. To the sine of 4x. And now this is the answer. So now writing this one, this one here is actually to the sine of, to the sine of 4x. To the sine of 4x. Okay, yeah, to the sine of x. And then we're done with that question there. So yeah, it's something that you need to take note of. So um, make sure that you understand that and uh, you are able to move on to the next question. So let us move on to the next question. We're looking at 5.5.2. 5 yes, Maras. Yes, yeah, I'm in class now. How are things? Uh, it's all is well, Maras. Yeah, okay. Okay, let me let, let me get back to you when I'm done with my class at 12. Okay, okay. yeah, okay. because I'm just in class now. I don't want even my students to be hearing your stories. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thanks, Kakul. We'll talk okay. then. Okay. Right. Consider the trigonometric expression, this one. For which value of x in the interval x between zero degrees and n degrees? Will 16, the sign of these, have its minimum value? Okay, for x between like 0 and 90, it's one mark, like one minute. But yeah, okay, you have to remember oh. something. I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you a chance to answer that one. And yeah, I'm going to give you a chance to answer that one. But I'm just going to write some background here as you're thinking about it. It's okay, you're thinking about it and... Okay, I'm going to write it as, okay, we know this one. Okay, we know this one. What is this one? We know that this one here is actually the same as... It's, it's going to be negative yeah. 90. Negative 90. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're on point. Because, okay, we'll, we'll think about the minimum value. Okay, yeah, let's think about it. Let's think about it. But okay, you want the value of x for which value of x? Okay, but if you have 16 the sine of x, cosine cubed x minus 8 sine x, cosine x. Okay, and this guy, this expression um is equal to this, and this becomes an identity because this equals this. It's an identity. Okay, call it because it's true. For all values of x. Okay, it's called an identity. It's a law. Now, this is a law in trigonometry. Now, for which value of x in the interval will this expression have its minimum value? Yeah, you, you, you were trying to say something. Please uh, say again now. I cut you short. I was trying to just um, elaborate a little bit. Yeah, what do you think? I said x is 90, negative 90. Okay, x is negative 19. Okay, that's fine because we're learning here. But remember that x lies between 0 degrees and positive 90. So the examiner is saying there are many, but just choose the angles between 0 and 90. But just like don't go out of this interval. So minus 90 might be correct. But the examiner says, hang on, please don't take, I get your point, I hear you. But the examiner says the, 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 the x must be positive. It can't be negative. You know, I agree. Negative 90 makes sense. But it is outside this interval. We need something between 0 and 90. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So what is the next thing that we need to do here? I agree with you. Minus 90 makes a lot of sense. But the examiner is saying, hey, students, don't go far, please. We want the minimum between 0 and 90, positive angles only, no negatives, no negatives. Right, so remember these questions are past exam questions. They're not questions from my head. It's not that I'm just bringing them here, no.
right, 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 right. For which value of x in the interval will this expression have its minimum value? Minimum value. Okay, so obviously we're thinking, 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 thinking. Thinking, 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 thinking. <laughs> right, so I mean, you need to think and reason and reason and reason and reason. Yeah, what do you think, Noah? It's tricky. Is it tricky? Okay, the minimum is going to be at minus 90, yes, but there's also 270. But 270 is outside this. Hang on, the examiner is being tricky because the examiner knows that the students are going to think X can only, but now remember, we are dealing with 4X here. So it is 4X. That is 270 degrees. Because the 270 is positive, but it is not between 0 and 90, but we, can, we need to divide it by 4, remember? So we are going to have divided by 4. Okay, so which one do I look at? Do I look at 2 sine 4X? Yes, we look at two sine four x because this whole thing is too. Oh, I look at this. I look at the angle of four x. Yes, we look at the angle of four x because, well, the truth is we can think about this. Yes, because they're equal. Yes, because they're equal, and this is simpler to analyze than this because this is just too many things here. That is why the examiner asked us to simplify. So we have that. So we divide by four, and we're getting what x equals. Okay, now let's come to this. What is two seventy divided by four? Okay, we do that on a calculator. And we do 270 and we divide that by the angle four. What does why is it equal to 270? Well, why is it 270? Okay, um, 270 because we're dealing with the minimum. And we know that the sine of 90 degrees is one. And you mentioned minus 90 and minus 90 makes sense because it is minus one. But we also know that the sine of 270 degrees is minus one. So the sine has its minimum at, at, at 270, you know? Because the sine of 270 is a minus, it's a minus one. So but that's what- it's outside. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is outside. But remember, okay, we divide by four. Remember, we must divide by four. That is why the examiner put it between nine, uh, uh, zero and 90. We must divide by four here. Okay, if we suggest therefore that this 4x can be 270 because 270 is a positive angle, and therefore divide by four positive, right? So we're gonna have therefore 270 divided by four. Okay, what is 270 divided? So we have 270 degrees, we divide it by four. What is the answer? 270 divided by four is actually 67, comma, Five, so it is sixty-seven comma five degrees, and it is actually uh, this sixty-seven comma five degrees is actually an angle that lies between zero and ninety. Any question? Can you explain again? Okay. How you we, got? To okay. 70. Yeah, we got to seventy because the examiner is looking for which version of X. Outside ninety. Yes, it is outside ninety, but the answer that we got. The, uh, the X that we got is 67,5, and 67,5 is between 0 and 90, you know? So it was a slightly a tricky question because we had to look for the minimum value, and the examiner knew that the students will think the minimum is going to be at minus 90 because the sign of minus 90 is minus 1, but not only at minus 90. So you didn't choose... Okay, negative 90 was also fine, but you didn't choose it because... It will be, be negative. It will be a negative answer. Yes, it's going to be a negative answer, and the examiner needs only positive answers. You know, the uh, the values of x must be between like zero and ninety degrees. So and two seventy, also the so sign of minus ninety is minus one. The sign of two seventy is also minus one, but um the the, the two seventy is more appropriate because it's a positive it's a positive angle, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Right, so yeah, we're good. We're so good. We're so good. Oh, we are we proceed to the next question. Next question, please. Okay, let's look at the next thing. 
determine the general solution of this particular question. Determine the general solution of this particular question. Right, so now you need to reason, you need to think, yar, sir. Um, I know that you're thinking big as well. So what would the answer be to this particular question? And you see, it's very rich in marks because uh, this question was given plenty and plenty of marks. How many marks was it given? Seven marks. Seven marks. And these seven marks whoo, are a lot of marks. Yeah, what do you think now? What is the first thing? First thing Can I factor out sine x? Can you factor out sine x? Okay, let's check that one. Can you factor out sine x? Very brilliant, brilliant idea. We can factor out sine x. Let's do that. So if we factor out, so yeah, so in the exam, obviously you need to first write the solution like this. So we are uh, writing the question. So it is sine x, cosine x plus sine x equals three, cosine squared x plus three, Cosine x. Okay. We factor out sine x. Bring the idea from now. Giving us cosine x plus one, which equals, and then what um, now? What factor out x? three cos x? We factor out three cosine x. And if mm. we do that, we're left with what? Cos x plus one. Cosine x plus one. Okay, good. And this is what we get. Then what do we do next? <laughs> We're trying to reason here together. What do we do here next? We, we try to make them the same. We try to make them the same. Well done. Okay, now we can collect like terms. We collect like terms. And now we also transpose things a little bit. Okay, we can just move this one to the other side. And there is the highest common factor. What is the highest common factor here? What is the highest common factor? Cos x plus one. Cosine x plus one is the highest common factor. Well done. And we then have this sine of x minus three cosine x equals zero. Then what do we do next at this point? What do we achieve here? What are we able to achieve here? Um, what are we able to achieve? Okay, I mean, we get to this point and then we can solve everything. So, which means that cosine x is minus one or, or sine x is equal to. It's equal to three. cosine x, right? And then what do we do? And then what do we do here? Uh, reference angle. Yeah, okay. reference. We get our reference angles. Well done. We get our reference oh. angles. Okay, we'll get our reference angles. Let's just write a trivial step here. Cosine x is minus one. And then here we can divide by the cosine. And this is the cosine, which is, which is three, right? And obviously it gives us 10x equals three. And this is cosine x equals minus one or so what do we do here? We get the reference angles, and what is the reference angle here? Reference angle, what's the answer? So how do you know when you're supposed to? Yes. How do you know when you're supposed to transpose the, the other equation to the other side? Okay, Um. you mean like this one, this equation? The third step. The third step. Okay, this this step here is the third one from the top. Uh, from the top, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, we transpose it to the other side. Yeah, because uh, it was clear that we had a common factor, and uh, the common factor. So how do you know when you're supposed to, like minus three cos x? Because sometimes they say you must change cos x to sine, or sine x to cos x. Yes. So um please ask your question again. Just how do how do we know if we need to minus? Yes, you do you look at the 
common factor cos yes, x because cos, cos x plus one and the cos x plus one was there to give us a solution as well but also there would be a wrong thing with the students i mean for example if a student is given two x two x squared equals x to solve for x how does one solve for x here you see, there are mistakes. So the way to solve for x is to do this. That is the correct way to solve for x. And then you take out the highest common factor and so on. Like so. Minus one. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm just giving this one. I know it's very easy, but yeah, it's the kind of thing, stuff you meet in algebra. Okay, and then you solve. x is zero. X. I'm just solving this for anyone who's going to watch this because I'm going to make this video available. Uh, for people to watch during their own leisure and just to, uh, you know, participate and see how to solve these questions. But now there is a mistake the students can do. What mistake can the students do? A student can say this x squared equals x and they can divide by x. The students who can think like this and say, okay, we can just cancel the x out. And if you do that, you have one, two x, and then x equals one half. What is wrong with this? The student is getting only one solution and one solution is lost. The x equal to zero solution is lost, okay? So and a student can see this and they can divide by cosine x plus one and then cancel and then say, okay, then we simplified everything and the whole thing is simpler, but it will be wrong to lose the solution. So in mathematics, we do not quite divide by variables that can potentially be zero. When solving equations, we must have, I'm just mentioning that, so that, you know, we are on the same page, but we make sure that we think, we think correctly and we avoid um, errors in reasoning. Okay, that is something that uh, remains pivotally important for us. Pivotally important. Okay, yeah. What is the reference angle here? The reference angle here is arc cosine of one. Or here we get a reference angle, which is arc tangent of three. Okay, I'm writing the arc tangent like this, but yeah, it can also be written this way with the exponent minus one there. We, you know, this one becomes sort of the, it's called the arc function, arc function. Okay, now, this is the reference angle. What is arc cosine when? It's zero degrees. Okay. And therefore, here you have the reference angle. Arc tangent three. Arc tangent of three. What is arc tangent of three here? Arc tangent of three is actually 71 decimal comma five seven degrees. So what do we do next? Okay, now we've got the reference angles and then we just need to get the answers. But now we remember that um, for the first part here, if you have the, the, the reference angle is zero, we have our cast diagram and the cosine is negative. In which quadrant is it negative? In which quadrants? Quadrants is it negative? It is negative in the second and the third, okay. Good, that's where the cosine is negative. So we're gonna need uh, an angle in the second quadrant. And so that is gonna be exactly the 180 degrees. So um, so X is gonna be the same as, so X is gonna be the same as 180 degrees minus zero degrees plus 360 degrees times K um, K in an element of the set of integers, right? And this gives us um, 180 degrees plus 360 degrees by KK in Z. Okay. All right, all right. Or we can also find another angle in the third, but it's the same because the reference angle is zero. So you'd have 180 degrees plus zero degrees plus, okay. Obviously we're adding 360 by K because the period is, um, is 360 for the cosine. 
And therefore, 180 degrees plus uh, zero degrees gives us 180 degrees plus 360 degrees by K, K, and Z. Okay, you are just giving some little questions here. And then, and then, the cosine, the tangent now is uh, actually an, um, an angle that is right. So, or, so obviously now we're dealing also with the tangent here and the tangent in view of the cast diagram. Right, so in view of the cast diagram, we have the following. Right, so in view of the cast diagram, the tangent is positive. It's positive. So it is positive where this tangent? This tangent is positive in the first and the third. Okay. So, which means therefore we're going to use the first one is x equals, is x equals 71, comma 57 degrees plus 300 uh, plus 180 <laughs> for the tangent, 180. 180 degrees by k, k in the integers. Right, k in the integers, but also we have another one or x equals. So, yeah, this is 180, yeah, it's, it's 71, it's an angle in the first quadrant, but also there is an angle in the other quadrant, okay, namely in the in the third quadrant. And so, um, how did they forget uh, the angle in the in the third quadrant? Okay, which is already part of this because it's, it's already part of this. So you can also say that you have 71,57. Yeah, it's 180 plus, but yeah, but it's already taken care of. Let me just write that one up here. So you're going to take this one and take it up to the top here and then say that we have x equals. 180 degrees and then we add 71,57 but these are secular functions and these are periodic functions so it's 180 degrees by k so this one is not necessary to do in the metric exams so we have 180 plus 71 in 180 plus 71 is actually exactly the same as um the 250 1.5 251 point that okay let's uh, uh, make sure we cross check our things so we have 180 plus uh, 71 point uh, uh, five seven degrees and uh, it is 200 251 five seven degrees plus 180 degrees by k k and z okay pay attention and note that at this point, this solution is enough, and this one you can leave out in the exam. Why? Okay, you can leave this one out because if k is one here, you already have 180 degrees plus 71,57, which is already 251,57. So this solution here and this one are exactly the same. This and that are the same. Nobody can okay, but this one uh, was obviously in the in the first quadrant, and this is in the third quadrant. But obviously, we're able to see that it's seventy one point five seven degrees is actually an angle that is the in the first. Yet now seventy one point five seven plus one eighty gives us two hundred and fifty one point five seven, and this two hundred fifty one point five seven is an angle that. Is here when k is one can be obtained by this equation, and therefore, yeah, there's no need for us to go to the third quadrant for this particular question. But always, or have your your eyes open and your mind open. Any question, any remark, any contribution, anything to change here now? Right, can you let me know. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay, good. Let's move to the next one. Okay, now let us play around with some identities. This can be a little bit tricky because, I mean, you need to decide what to do. And so how do we prove this one? 
Okay, to prove it's easy, now he's going to think of that. Okay, but proving it's straightforward because we just do what? We just take one side and produce the other. Okay, we're doing 5.3.1. We take the left or the right and produce the other. Okay, so let's let. We are doing 5.3.1 and we are trying to Proof to the soul, we have this sign of 3x. I'm going to suggest we take the left, but you can also take the right and produce the left. You can also do both sides of this. I mean, well, how do we do this one? Now, what do you think? I'm just test testing you before we do it. Before I do it together, but what can we do here? Suppose you walk into these. Boom, you see these. Okay, yeah, the other paper is coming, remember? There's a paper that is coming, the... um. Temp 2, June, it's coming. Paper 2, I think. Uh, I think they've not written that one yet. You see, I showed you the how to paper, paper 1. Okay, now there's paper 2 that must come. And I'm sure that I would like us to discuss those papers. If we don't discuss them, I'm going to give them to you. And you try, and then I mark. Okay, that is one thing that we're going to do. Okay, but let's try this one. Five point three point one. We need to prove this identity. We want to do it together. Of course, I agree. But what can you throw in as an idea here on what you think the best way to tackle this is? There are many ways to do it, but yeah, any suggestion, any idea? Any idea? It's tricky. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm just giving like, they look they look like similar. The, uh-huh. Yes. They look similar because this one is sign x at the top and this one is sign x at the bottom, and this one is one minus cosine three x and r. I mean, what is the first step? What can we do? There are many things that can be done, like a billion, 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 billion things. Yeah, but just one. Just one. Okay, yeah, this is what you can do. I'm just sharing the idea, never mind that. Okay, if the identities in the exam are like this, they just switch places, like the sine three x is in the bottom and the, uh, and now the one minus cosine becomes one plus cosine. So yeah, you need to know that this becomes a brain teaser. It becomes a brain teaser, what brain teaser? We put a plus. We put a plus. We rationalize to introduce the plus, the one plus cosine three x. We rationalize. Uh -huh. uh, what? Rationalize? Yes, we rationalize. At this point, we rationalize. Oh, how does rationalizing work? Okay, how does rationalizing work? Okay, so we multiply. Yeah, so we are rationalizing the denominator. So yeah, we are rationalizing the denominator. Okay, uh, in the way we should yeah, please come again. Can you show an example for the numerator when you rationalize it? When you rationalize the numerator, right? Okay, good. Yeah. We can rationalize the numerator. For example, um, we can have one plus the square root of three and uh, divided by um, divided by four, for example. Okay, let us rationalize the numerator here. And, and that is the instruction. So we want to rationalize, rationalize the numerator. How do we rationalize the numerator? So we have one plus this and four, and we multiply by the conjugate. We multiply by the conjugate. Okay, you see something called the conjugate? Right, so if you multiply by the conjugate, you change the sign in the middle, and then one by one is one. So yeah, if you multiply by the conjugate, just multiply one and one, and then multiply the square root of three by negative square root of three, and you get three. Right, and you have four, for example, one minus square root of three. Just doing this for anyone who is interested in just knowing what the answer is going to be to this one. Uh, one minus three to minus two, uh, four, okay, four open bracket, one minus the square root of three. Right, so your one minus square root of three. 
Divide right through by two, which is minus one over two, one minus square root of three. Okay, so yeah, this would be an example of us rationalizing the 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 numerator. Okay, I mean, in the end, if we're rationalizing the numerator, it means therefore the numerator was irrational. It was irrational and we have made it rational. And how do we make it rational? By multiplying by the conjugate. And the conjugate of the conjugate of one plus three is you can write here and say conjugate. Conjugate of one plus the square root of three is one minus the square root of three. Okay, this is conjugation. It's called conjugation. So um, we do that. Any question, Neo? No, that's no fine. question. Okay, it's okay. So, uh, okay, now we gonna tackle these ourselves. Okay, came in the one of the exams, and uh, we are playing around with the exam, past exam questions, and want to see what what it comes under equations. What is asked under equations? So we rationalize the denominator, and if you rationalize the denominator, it becomes the easiest one to write because just multiply one by one, we get one. Just multiply these by that, we get minus whole sine squared of 3x. And then we write uh, the numerator as the sine of 3x. Okay, we write as the sine of 3x. The sine of 3x and we have 1 plus cosine 3x. Okay, what is 1 minus cosine squared 3x? What do you think, now? What do you think the denominator is the same as? It's um, I'm just teasing you. I tease you sometimes. That just to keep your mind active, you see, because it's the best way to learn to to to, to teach an athlete how to play. You need to keep their minds active. Yeah. Sine squared three x. Well then, sine squared three x. Sine squared. 3x. No, that's correct. Okay, so if it is sine squared 3x now, this one is going to cancel one factor giving us one because here is sine squared. Sine squared is like sine 3x, sine 3x. So yeah, it's going to cancel one of them giving one plus cosine 3x all divided by the trigonometric sine of 3x which is this guy. And this is equal to the what? The right-hand side. It is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, so we've got one plus cosine 3x over sine 3x. And so we can conclude and then say hands. And then say hands. Now, the sign, uh, uh, obviously we can say this first. And say hands the left and the right are equal to each other. Hands the left hand side equals the right hand side of the trigonometric equation. Moreover, thus we can say the trigonometric sine of 3x we divide by 1 minus cosine 3x, and this is 1 plus cosine 3x so we divide by sine 3x. Like so. And this is the answer to this. It's the answer to this. Any question, Janeo? Any suggestion? No. No suggestion. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next one. And now we've proven this identity. Let's move to the next one. We're looking at 5.3.2. And, and this one says determine the values of x in the interval x. An element uh, of the this interval uh, between zero degrees and sixty degrees for which the identity will be undefined. How do we deal with undefined identities? And what is the value of x? And what do you think? It's when the denominator is zero. It's when the denominator is zero. Excellent star. It's when the denominator is zero. So when is the denominator zero here? What do you think? The Right, so it's undefined. It's undefined when? When the sine of 3x is zero. 
And also when one minus when one minus cosine three x. So we consider both. Um we'll consider both three x equals zero. So undefined when the sine of three x equals zero in one minus cosine three x equals zero, right? Okay, mm -hmm. because we take like both sides, we consider like everything, everything, like entirely everything. What do we do now? What do we do now? Zero divided by three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. So sine x is zero. Yeah. So we're going to find uh, our usual stuff and our things. Uh, what do we call those? The reference angles. So right now we're dealing with the reference angle. The reference angle of this one is going to be arc sine of zero. Okay, obviously this one here can be seen as cosine 3x equals 1. And that means that you can be able to find a reference angle and say the reference angle is r cosine of 1. And what is r cosine of 1? We thought that is 0 degrees. Okay, and r sine of zero, arc sine of zero, it's zero degrees as well, okay? Now, at this point, when is the sine zero? And when is the cosine one? The sine is zero, if you look at the cos diagram, zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. Right, so we are in business. We are in business. So now, at this point, we have this. And when is the sign zero? The sign is zero in two places. It is zero where? The sign is zero here at zero degrees, but it's also zero at 180 degrees. The cosine is zero. Now, if this is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, obviously here we have our... 360 degrees as much as we have over 360 degrees here as well. Now, the cosine itself is zero at multiple places, uh, or rather the cosine is one, um, right, at multiple places. It is it is one here at zero and 360 degrees, but at 180, the cosine of 180 becomes exactly a negative one, okay? Now, we are in business and we're able to see this and we say three X. We have 3x equals uh, exactly 0 degrees. So we have uh, the sine of 3x equals 0. So we have uh, 3x equals 0 degrees. Or we have uh, actually um, another case. So the sine is 0 um, at, in two places. It is 0 at 0 degrees, but it's also 0 at 180 degrees. So obviously, which means that the 3x is uh, 180 degrees as well. We divide both left and right by three here, getting zero degrees divided by three, and this gives us zero degrees or x equals, we have 180 divided by three, which is 60 degrees, like so. Um, so in the end, then what do we have here? And, which means therefore now you have uh, cosine 3x equals uh, one and uh, it means what? Okay, we found that the reference angle is uh, zero degrees. So if the reference angle is zero degrees, it means that 3x is equal to zero degrees, um, right? Or we can say 3x equals 360 degrees. Okay, we noted that the cosine is uh, one, cosine 3x is one at zero degrees and 360 degrees simultaneously. Okay, now we continue. Dividing by three here, we have x equals zero degrees or x equals, okay, you divide, you divide here by, um, by three and you divide here by three, you get 120 degrees. But now we are interested in the angles that lie there. So we need to make choices and then say hands. We need to conclude here and say hands. 
x equals zero degrees because it's there. X equals sixty degrees. This one, this one, zero degrees. But yeah, the one twenty is out of the picture, so this one is not applicable here because of the fact that we're dealing with angles between zero and sixty degrees, and therefore these becomes are zero. And your any question now? Any question? Can you please explain? Okay, good. Right, we are we're effectively saying here, remember that our x lies between 0 degrees and 60 degrees. So between 0 degrees and 60 degrees, um, we have got 0 degrees here, we divided by 3, we divided by 3, 180 divided by 3, 60 degrees, and divided 0 degrees by 3, getting uh, 0 degrees. And we have 360 divided by 3 is 110 degrees. So we're interested in the angles between 0 and uh, 60 degrees. 0 degrees, x is 0 degrees, so we're going to take that one as, as our answer. But also x equals 60 degrees, we're going to take this one, that one as our answer. Uh, but x is 0 degrees. Uh, yes, we've already got that one, so R is taken care of. Uh, x equals 120 degrees. 120 degrees, no, it's not. Why? Why would 120 degrees be out of the picture? It is out of the picture simply because we are dealing with the angles between 0 and 60, and 120 is way too out. It's, it's too big. It's too big of an angle that is 110, so it's not applicable. And then the two answers, 0 degrees and 60 degrees, which are the ones um, that are wanted. Uh, these are the ones, uh, these two angles are the ones for which the identity will be un to find any any idea then any question contribution remark anything to add now okay so that's the final answer x that's the zero. final answer is x is zero or x is um 60 degrees can you even write like that can you even write x is zero or x is actually exactly 60 degrees x is zero or x is 60 degrees. Yeah, that is the answer. So any question? No question. Mm, no. Okay, that's fine. We just we just, we just practicing here. There's no fast. So we're just practicing with these past exam questions. This is the next one. Okay, here comes the next one. And the next one is as good. Right, without using a calculator, simplify the following expression to a single trigonometric term. Let's look at this one. Right, we need to simplify this to a single trigonometric term. What is the first step here now? What do we do first? We need to simplify it. Where do we start? I'm just teasing you because I didn't do it. Yeah, I want to, I want to like know what you think about the question. Reduction. Reduction formulae, right? Right, so we're looking at reduction formulae. So we're going to reduce the angles. Okay, so the couple of things we can do. So yeah, I mean, how to reduce? What angles do we reduce? I, I guess that's the question. What angles would we reduce here? Cos 140. Cos 140. And how do we reduce cos 140? To what angle? Cos 440 minus 360. Cos 440 minus 360, right, well done. Cosine 440 degrees minus 360 degrees. Well done, you can erase right like that. And then what next do we do? And then... I'm just teasing you. <laughs> I just need to know what you think, yeah? You're gonna get cos 80. And then we're going to get cosine 80 denominator. We're going to get cosine 80 degrees. I agree with you. Okay. Then the rest of the other things, like sine 10, what do we do with them? Sine 10 is going to cancel cos 80. Okay. Sine 10 is going to cancel cosine 80. Okay. Why? Because it's co-functions. Co-functions, well done, co-functions. So in other words, cosine 80 degrees, cosine 10, sine 10 degrees equals 
calls an area, if it calls uh, these are coefficients, but also 10 degrees and 90 and 80 degrees, when you add them, you get 90, and they are called complementary angles. Complementary angles. Okay. The complementary angles are those angles whose summation is actually 90 degrees. So if you add the 10 and the 80, you get actually 90 degrees. And these are called complementary angles. And now when you add them up, you get that. So yeah, uh, in the numerator, therefore, we have the sign of 10 degrees. In which quadrant is now, what about the, the, the tangent of 360 minus theta? What does it become? It's going to be negative 10 theta. It's going to be negative tangent of theta. Well done. Negative tangent of theta. And therefore, we can remove something here. We can remove this little bit. We can remove this little bit. We can remove these little bits. Okay, we continue then. We continue then. then yeah. Um, what do we do next? Then the sine two theta, you're going to split it to two sine theta cos theta. Yes, then you're going to split the sine as usual to the compound and formula. And uh, it's going to become what now is saying there. It's going to become exactly two sine theta. Two sine theta, all sine theta. Right next, what do we do? And then negative 10 theta is going to be negative sine over cos. We can write it in the form sine over cosine. The sine over cosine. All right. So, yeah, we're going to write sine over cosine. Okay. That's what we're writing. That is what we writing. Okay. So, it's sine over cosine. Okay, and therefore it is sine theta over cosine theta. That is the tangent of theta, and then we have two sine theta, cosine theta, any input here. Now, what do we do next? Then you cancel the cos theta. We cancel the cosine of theta. We cancel the cosine of theta. So this one cancels out, and then what do we achieve? Then we get negative two sine squared theta. But then we get negative two sine squared theta. So for a, for a kid who does not know that the sine of this uh, here, um, the kid can make this one the same. Uh, the kid can be able to write here this one, the sine of the 10 can be written as 90 degrees minus 80 degrees divided by cosine 80 degrees minus or it's minus two sine by sine is actually sine squared of theta okay so now the 90 minus is the first quadrant in the first quadrant because if you have a zero degrees of 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees 360 degrees and if you have 90 minus theater and then you have 90 degrees plus theater so the 90 minus is an end it's actually in the first quadrant in which by the cast rule uh, all the trick ratios are positive so it's going to be positive but it changes to the to its co-function the cosine of um, 80 degrees Added by the cosine of um, 80. Okay, uh, it is one I agree with you there, but I'm just writing some little bit of elaboration. So this is two sine squared theta, and then cosine squared over cosine of cosine 80 degrees divided by cosine 80 degrees is the one um, minus the sine squared of theta. What is one minus that? two sine squared theta? Yeah. Yes, this one here. Can you simplify it? How did we get one? Please come again. How did we get one? Okay, how did you get one? Um, we divided cosine eighty degrees by cosine eighty. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. And therefore, I can say, yeah. It's cos two theta. 
Cosine 2 theta. Well done. This is cosine 2 theta. And this actually is the simplified expression. No further simplification that is possible because the question said without using calculator, simplify the following expression to a single trigonometric term. And this is a single trigonometric term. And we're done. We're done. I completely, completely solved this problem here in front of me. Okay, so we move to the next question. Right, the next question is aggressive. The next question is an angry question. It is 6.2.1. Given the sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus the sine of 60 degrees minus 2x, calculate the value of k, the value of k, if the sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus the sine of 60 degrees minus 2x equals k cosine 2x. What do we do here now? What is the first step? What would you do first? What gonna, um, first? What, what how, how, is k, yeah? Going to um, break it up into its compound. Compound angle family. Compound. Compound angle family. So with the side of 60 degrees plus 2x plus the sine of 60 degrees minus 2x, which is k, the cosine of 2x. So the sine here can be further uh, expanded to the sine of 60 degrees, cosine 2x, plus cosine 60 degrees, the sine of 2x, plus Cosine 60 degrees. Uh, this I just put this sign here. Uh, so we have uh, here the sine of 60 degrees. Right here we have the sine of 60 degrees. And then we have cosine 2x minus for this one here. Cosine 60 degrees. The sine of 2x. And the result is k cosine 2x. Okay, what do we do next, now? What do you suggest we do? Sign 60 is square root 3 over 2. Sign 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, good. But before that, this guy and this guy cancel out. Cosine 60 sign 2x. Cosine 60 sign 2x cancel out. And we have the sign of this and that, um, you know, I like terms. And if we add them up, we have 2, the trigonometric sign of 60. Cosine 2x and this is k cosine 2x. And I agree with you now that at this point, if this is 60 degrees, the square root of 3 here, 2, 1, uh, the sine of 60 is actually the same as uh, if you can't get the sine of 60 in view of soccer tower. In view of soccer tower, sine of 60 is the same opposite of hypotenuse. So 60 is opposite of hypotenuse, which is the square root of 3 out of 2. Cosine 2x equals k cosine 2x. What do we do next? What do we do next? <clears throat> You divide by you divide k cos two x by cos two x. Yeah, we can always do that. Good. Um, the two cancels out first things first, giving us the square root of three cosine two x equals k cosine two x. Yeah. We divide. We divide. Okay. Now there's always an issue with dividing with an unknown. So I would say. Doesn't matter. You transpose the things. But yeah, in the in this case you can divide, but I don't want to teach division by functions of variables. It's not it's problematic sometimes. So we have cosine to x. Right, so here we have cosine to x, which you take out. Which is the square root of three. Minus k equals zero. 
which means, okay, this is cosine two x, which means we have cosine two x equals zero or k equals the square root of three. Okay, this would be a very nice way to solve things, but yeah, we don't want this, but one k equals three, so therefore k equals the square root of three. K equals the square root of three. K equals the square root of three, like so. K equals the square root of three, like I've done. Any question, any suggestion, any input, anything else to add, any contribution to make? Uh, no. Nothing. Okay, good. Let's move to the next one. Right, 6.2.2 is not different, but the examiner is saying here, okay, we're still given um, the sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus the sine of 60 degrees minus 2x. If cosine x is the square root of t without using calculator, determine the value of these in terms of t. In terms of t. So what do we do here? What do we do first? First things first in mathematics, even when a question is difficult, but what you do first, you copy the question. It is actually the tangent of 60 degrees, and uh, you have the sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus the sine of 60 degrees minus 2x, like so. Then what, what do we do next? What do we do next? Um, it's 1060, which is yeah. square root of 3. Okay, well done. The tangent of 60. So you just remind ourselves, each, remind each other, this is 60 degrees, this one is 90 degrees, our special triangles. And this one here is the square root of 3. One and a two here. The hypotenuse is of length two units and put a two here. So right now we have the tangent of 60 degrees. The tangent of 60 degrees is what? Obviously, we remember our old friend Sokatoa. The tangent is opposite of adjacent. We come here and then say 60 opposite of adjacent is the square root of three. Of one, which is just square of three, as you said. So very well done to you for being able to remember that. Then what do we do next? Oh. No. Then it's sine sixty. Mhm. Mm sine sixty, etc. But we've already got we've already got this one. What did you get this one to be? Which one? So this whole thing. So, because we've already got it here, this sine 60 degrees plus 2x plus sine 60 degrees minus 2x is equal to what? Okay, we did it before. It's... Right, so we got your, we got, if the sine of this, it came down it's... to 2x. Yes. So yeah, this one on the left of the equation, we went it out and it came down to the square root of three times cosine two x. So this we are good. So we're gonna write it here because we already know this whole thing here is the square root of three cosine two x. I mean we could do it again, but yeah, we already know it from the first question. So the examiner did not quite expect the repetition of the process there. Okay. And then what is the answer to this? So we have the square root of three times the square root of three. What is square root of three times the square root of three? It's nine. Okay, y'all yeah, can write the square root of nine if you like. It's three. Three, <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, no to write three. If you multiply the square root, if you multiply the square root of x by the square root of x, you just get x. Okay, and then we have cosine two x equals then what do we do next because we want to write this in terms of t so yeah what do we do here at this point what do we do 
three. Uh huh. Okay. Like so. Okay. Oh. Uh huh. Cosine two x. We remember that cosine two x because we've already been given cosine x, which is square root of t. So we're gonna use the uh, because cosine two x is two cosine squared x minus one, but it's also one minus two sine squared x, which is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, there are three identities. So for cosine two x, because we have cosine two x, so we can choose here. We can write two cosine squared x minus one, or we can write one minus two sine squared x, or we can use cosine squared x minus one. Which one would be the best one to use? The best identity to use. Or the most the most preferred. Most preferable. Pizza. Please repeat yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which identity um, among one? And three would be the best one to use here because we have cosine two x. We need to use one of the double formulae, just one of them. So, which one would be ideal to use? The first one. Well done, the first one. Okay, so because uh, if it's the cosine two x is cos cosine two x is two cosine squared minus one, so it is two cosine squared x minus one, which is three. Okay, two. Cosine x is the square root of t squared minus one, which is three. Okay, if you square, if you square the square root, it becomes just t. So that we have two t minus one. And uh, you multiply three times two is a six t minus three. And this becomes the answer to the problem. It becomes the answer to the problem, and therefore we have managed to solve this problem. And the answer is actually exactly uh, 60 minus minus 3. Okay, we're done for the three box there. So, so that is what, <laughs> excuse me, that is what was expected. And this was Please come again. T equals to half. Okay, yeah, we could say T equals half. <laughs> yes, T would be half if we could make the whole thing zero. But the examiner just gave us this expression without equating it to zero. So uh, we just had to deal with it like that, you know. But obviously, I agree that if ever this expression were to be zero, equal to zero, equal to zero, equal to zero, which the examiner did not give us, it would mean, therefore, T equals one half. I agree with you there. Next question. Right, in the next question, you determine the general solution of this particular equation. What is the general solution of this particular equation? So, yeah, what would you do here now? What would you do here? Mm -hmm. Two times two x. Two times two x. Two x. Okay. So yeah, what do we write first? What do we write here? Left hand side. Left hand side. Right, so the left hand side, yeah, definitely I agree with you. But now this one is the same as what? So it's the same as cosine of A minus B. Cosine of A minus B is cosine A, cosine B, um, plus the sine of A, and then the sine of B. And then the sine of B. Right, so this is going to be exactly the sine of B. Yeah, what do we do here? 
it's going to be oh, so, yeah so the point is yeah so it's going to be cosine for x minus x for x minus x well done because if you see the plus in the middle here you see the plus here it means that it must be minus there okay and this is minus 0 comma 7. so now i mean what do we do at this particular juncture what is the next thing to do here Um, the reference angles. The reference angles. Well, then, no the reference angles. Now we get our reference angles. I was teasing you. So, yeah, we get the reference angles. So, you know, right. So, you can write in small letters, usual. So, you can write here the reference angle. So, the reference angle is going to be at cosine of 0, 7. Zero comma seven. Okay. Right. So you are, and then uh, if you use a calculator, what are we able to achieve at this? Thirty-five point five seven. Okay. Good. 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 Um, okay, obviously I'm using my calculator as well to make sure that we get the correct answers here. We don't want to make mistakes, or so I'm using my computer, my calculator here, so I'm just going to write that one down, and obviously you are most certainly at the point. And, uh, and uh, we're great. We're so good. Right. So um, obviously you have already used your calculator, and uh, you're able to get the answer. And I'm checking mine as well, 5.3. 5.3, 5 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3, 5.3
Right. So, I mean, we have this here and therefore let us see what to get as the answer. So, I mean, if we have the cosine of 3x, cosine of 3x is the same as equal to equal to exactly that one there equals exactly that one there. Okay, your, 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 your. Okay, so now this one is 3x equals. So, right, so if at this point uh, you have this, and this is exactly 180 degrees minus 25.57. We're getting 134. 134, comma, 3 degrees plus 360 degrees by K, K an element of the set of integers, or 3x equals, okay, this is 200, and uh, exactly 25, 5, 7 degrees, 360 by K, K and Z. So we continue. 134.43 divided by 3, which is exactly 44, comma, 81 degrees, divided by 3, which is 120. Okay, so you divide, you divide right now 25.5. Five seven you divide it by three, it's seventy-five. So you have exactly seventy-five comma one nine degrees. Okay, divide by three sixty by three, you get one hundred and twenty degrees by K, K an element of the set of integers. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. What is the next thing that we need to do? Right, so we have solved this one and we have found the germ solution here at this particular question. And uh, we proceed to solve this, uh, the rest of the other questions uh, in step-by-step -step fashion. And uh, we are very excited to solve uh, to solve more problems here because we are good students and we want to make sure that we get the answers that the examiners want. Right, and obviously without further ado, we actually proceed to the next part. It's my hope that there's no question. Any suggestion now? Maybe there is a number that is missing. There is something we need to add or something to remove. Anything like that? No. No, Thank, thanks, Nevo. Right, so, next question. Right, we need to prove this particular identity. We need to prove this particular identity. So, now, to prove this particular identity, there are a couple of things that we need to take into account, and uh, we need to proceed to prove this with so much ease. Let us prove this one with Neville. What do we do here now? Okay, we need to prove the identity just to take you up to speed, to familiarize you with the question. We have been given sine for x times cosine to x minus two cosine for x times sine x times cosine x, all divided by 10 to x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared. So what do we do here? What do we do here? Mm -hmm. Too easy. Sign, sign two times two x. Okay, so yeah, we need to take one side. So we take the left hand side, I presume. So what do we write here? Okay, if you take the left hand side, you copy the question. You copy the the left hand side as it is. You copy the left hand side is these, and then you divide by the tangent of 2x. So what do we do next? 
sine two times two. The sine of two times two, right? Yeah, I agree with you. That is something we can do. That is something we can do. But if you look at sine four x cosine two x, and then this one you can write cosine four x, and then you allow the two to go in, and you have two sine x cosine x, and it is all divided by the tangent of 2x. The left hand side, which is exactly the sine of 4x cosine 2x cosine 5x. What is this one? This one, the 2 side x cosine x is the same as the sine of 2x all divided by the tangent of 2x. Yeah. So what is this? Two. Please come again. Step two. How how did you get this two? Step two. Oh, step two. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's fine. Step two. Let's talk about step two now. So obviously we had this guy here with this. So uh, constant for x is the old one out. So we took it out, and then we're left with. 2 sine x cosine x. So we have 2 sine x cosine x and we regrouped the term. So we did re regrouping. Right, when we did regrouping, we then got 2 sine x cosine x. But 2 sine x cosine x is the same as what? 2 sine x cosine x is sine 2x. Right? Okay, because we remember that sine 2x is the same as 2 sine x cosine x okay we applied that and when you get to the point it is very clear that the left hand side okay so what identity do we use here for this so by the second step yes yeah, second step this one negative cos 4x um yeah, negative yes. cosine for x which is this one which is cosine for x this one Cosine for x. Right. Cosine for x. And then you left two. Which? Like here. The by the second step. Okay, second step. Did you factor rise or what did you do? What did you do here? Okay, that's a good point. Did you factor? Yes. So we we took out cosine for x. And if we factorize cosine. For x, we're left with 2 sine x cosine x, right? So we filtered out cosine for x. Leaving us with 2 sine x cosine x. And the 2 sine x cosine x is what gives us the sine 2x. So you filter right. out? Yeah, we filter out. Cos yes, we filter out negative cosine for x. Yeah, correct. You took out negative cos for x? Yes. But it's different from cos x. So... Please come again. I'm trying. I'm trying to understand what you mean. <laughs> it's different from cos x. Is it different so from how, you... how do you factorize that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because we were having what? Okay. Let's put it together. We're having minus two. Cosine for x, sine x, cosine x, let's see. So, okay, we do. Okay, so we can take out this one with the negative. So, if you have minus cosine for x, minus cosine for x, which is 2 sine x, cosine x. Right, so we took out minus cosine for x, and then you're left with 2 sine x cosine x, and uh, which is minus cosine for x, and therefore this 2 sine x cosine x is actually the sine of 2x. Is the trigonometric sine of 2x. Trigonometric sine of 2x. No? Which is, which is this, right? Okay. Yeah, try to think about it. 
And then now this one is a it's 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 a it's a nice compound angle formula. What what is the compound angle formula for sine of a b minus? So sine of a b minus becomes sine of the a is cosine, and then you subtract the two x all over tangent of two x. And then now this this point is equal. To, what is the four x minus two x? Is two x over the ten of two x? The um, the tangent of x is the same as the sine of two x. Okay, it is exactly the same as the sine of two x over cosine two x for the denominator. Okay, uh, let's proceed here on the further right of the of the board. And I want us to therefore now deal with this the right hand side, uh, the left. Okay, so we have this. You divide by the sine two x over cosine two x. We multiply by cosine two x sine two x. Okay, so this one cancels out, giving us the left hand side, which is cosine two x. Okay, what is cosine two x? Is it equal to this? Is it equal to cosine squared minus sine squared? Yes, it's equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. It's the double angle formula, and this is the right hand side, right? And up here says the conclusion. Therefore, the left hand side equals the right hand side. Any question now or anything to add here as we prove this identity? Any contributions? Anything to subtract? I'm still writing. Oh, okay, that's fine. A very interesting question that came from one of the. Um... Right. Right, so we're good. We're good. Um, perfect. Right. Right, so. Yes, it's fine. Okay, it's good. Right, so this is one question that was uh, given to us, and it was a very, very awesome question that we had to solve. Right, I think that we have the time is 12 o'clock, midday. And uh, we can take a break. And uh, I'll keep you posted of more questions on, on WhatsApp. Okay, I'll keep you posted of, because the time is 12 o'clock and we're supposed to start at 10 to 12. No? Yes. Um, yeah, I still have like lots of questions. We still can continue, but you know, it's, it's some good time to take a break, relax. But I'm going to keep you posted on WhatsApp. But also, okay. yeah, I'll indicate what else we need to do to um, improve skills on this topic and to make sure that we shape better. Right, so it is awesome having a discussion this, um, this day, this good Saturday. Right, so I'll keep you posted once again on WhatsApp. Right, from us, enjoy your afternoon and have a happy Saturday. And goodbye, okay. now, Noah. Goodbye, Noah. Yes, goodbye, Noah.